Shabbat Shalom. I want to start by giving all the praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Rarakakwadash. Double honors to my elder apostles of the great Muslim who will. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect tabernacle of David, God, the the four corners of the earth. And, um, you know, I'm watching Elder Apostle Tahar's video dealing with, you know, the slave patrols, in which, uh, you know, your modern day slave patrol is, um, you know, your highway patrol, you know, your modern day centurion police officers, your law enforcement, you know, that, that you know, troller, uh, patrol around, you know, looking for Jake to prey on, you know, to intimidate Jake, you know, to, um, usurp authority and abuse of, of, of power and um you know that's going into the curse you know that um you know our 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 uh minds would be would hang in doubt you know so uh you know this was all part of the punishment of Israel and uh, the Lord said you know that my wrath you know I smote you but ultimately, he's going to have mercy upon us. And that's pursuant to Isaiah, the 60th chapter. And I think it's around the 10th verse when he made that statement. Let me go to it real quick. And this is all because of our wrongdoing of not, you know, keeping our end of the agreement that we had with the Heavenly Father. Uh, we went against, we broke the law, statutes, and commandments. And uh, according to the contract, you know, if we, if we didn't keep it, you know, the Lord would uh, pour upon us these curses. And um, the elder apostle happens to be going into some of the things we endured under the curse, in which, you know, to this very day, we are yet this day in our captivity. All right, but um, this is what the Lord said. This is Isaiah 60 and uh, verse 10, and this is when we're in the kingdom. It says, and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. So meaning what? The Lord is not going to, you know, maintain his anger against us. All right? And we know that the time of man is different from the time of the Most High. We know that, you know, one day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day unto the Lord. So in the flesh, you know, we would count the day of the Lord slackness, but the Lord isn't slack at all. But we're at the end of this punishment, and that's why the Lord got his prophets, his, his servants, the prophets out. All right. You know, bringing out the testimony against this devil and he's constantly being exposed. And I just thought. This devil has a hell of a penalty awaiting him. All right. He has a, 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 a very great, mighty punishment at the end of this captivity. Now, I was reading 2 Ezra, the sixth chapter, in the, uh, the New Revised Standard Version. And I happen to have that pulled up here on the uh, the Bible Gateway. I usually go to our Bible, but it only deals with um, the KJV. But um, when you read uh, this translation, and you read how it's actually uh, read, you know, a lot can be taken from it. Which is why I want to uh, use this version of it in this lesson. All right, and I'm gonna start with the dividing of times, which we all know that. You know, we're at the end of Esau's age. We're at the end of Esau's eon. All right? And that's why you're seeing him on a downward spiral. This is why he's coming down with great wrath because you know that his time is short. Basically, his kingdom is about finished. All right? So without further ado, I'm going to start. I'm going to actually read uh, verses 7 through 10. And then I'm going to jump down to verse um, 18. I says, I answered and said, what will be the dividing of the times? Or when will be the end of the first age and the beginning of the age that follows? He said, uh, he said to me, from Abraham to Isaac, because from him were born Jacob and Esau. For Jacob's hand held Esau's hill 
from the beginning, you know, going back to the account in Genesis, the 25th chapter. All right, it said that, um, you know, Esau came out all over like a hairy garment, and the Lord, I mean, uh, Isaac called him uh, Esau or Aishah, or Aishah, which means wasted away. And then Jacob, you know, when he came out, his hand was um, uh, uh, fixated on the hill of uh, Esau. So he had his he had a he had a, a, a firm grip on the hill of Esau, you know, when they were pulled out of the womb because they were struggling, they were fighting, and that was all you know spiritual, because we will be fighting, and 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 one with each other, throughout our existence, you know, for the rest of uh, time. And it and, and it carried out throughout the different captivities that we had. All right, uh, go back to the Babylonian. Uh, empire when they uh, besieged Jerusalem and took us down you had Esau right there all right helping uh, the Babylonians take us down so he was a major uh, perpetrator in that uh, incident the Lord haven't forgot about that then also during the, uh, the medial Persian Empire you had Haman that rose up in the ranks during that time and um you know, he didn't hesitate to try to, you know, get us knocked off. He tried to exterminate uh, Judah. I believe it was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi at the time because the northern kingdom, they already carried away of the uh, Syrian captivity. And then the, the majority of them left, you know, that side of the world and came over to the Americas. So you still had, you know, a small remnant of uh, the northern tribes that was still uh, amongst uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. All right. And then, of course, you know, they were brought down by the Greeks. And that's when uh, Esau took over the known world. And that's when uh, evil began to multiply. And that's when we started to catch uh, total hell. All right. We were caught in the crossfires of the wars between the Ptolemies and the, um, the Seleucids. You had the abomination of desolation. All right. Where well, we had to. You know, go to war with this devil in order to um rebuild and dedicate the temple. So so much then happened, you know, from those times even up until this time. The Roman Empire. And then of course the besiegement of Jerusalem from 66 to 70 AD. All right, and and, the, and we were trodden down of the heathen at that time. And that was around the time when the Lord was on the scene and they pierced the Lord. They crucified him and pierced him. And from that moment on, it has been the beginning of the end of uh, of the world, as we all know it. And all the evil, all the wickedness that this devil's done from that time on to this very time, that's all have been uh, recorded, all right, in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. And he has not forgotten. So now we're at the end of an age where Esau is uh, on his way down. He's, 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 he's at his downfall right now. And Jacob is on the rise right now. And that's beginning with the elect being gathered from the four corners of the earth by the word of the, of the Lord. All right, so continuing on, it says, Now Esau is the end of this age, and Jacob is the beginning of the age that follows. The beginning of a person is the hand. All right. And that's, you know, where your strength, you know, your strength lies within your arm and your hand. All right. Esau was at the, the, the height of his power, you know, going back to uh, the ancient uh, uh, Greco-Roman Empire, Greeks, Rome. And then, of course, you know, he came back again, you know, because, you know, he got uh, he got uh, fatally wounded. But that deadly wound got healed. And now what's left is uh, the hill. In, in in the toes of, of his feet which right now the the, the toes you know represents uh the, the the power structure of the of the eu the european union and then of course they have their um militarized union which is uh the uh the north atlantic treaty organization and right now they're uh divided pursuant to what daniel the second chapter Currently in the news right now, you got um, 
you got the uh, the European countries, you know, that are um, basically there's tension because one, you know, you already had Great Britain that um, you know exited the union. That's where you had um, you know Brexit from. Um, and then also, you know, they've been doing uh, you know trade with uh, Russia and gas. You know, basically, uh, Russia has been a, a a gas station for Europe, and they you know set they tried to set a pipeline called the Nord Stream pipeline, and uh, America has been running interference, you know, between the two, and they've been basically trying to stop them from doing business with Russia, but Russia has been giving them uh, gas that they can afford. They can't afford um, American oil. So there's tension right now. Basically, you know, the the the, the beast is uh, beginning to uh, you know shift away in alliance with the United States, which is the Great Whore, Babylon the Great, that sits upon the beast, the scarlet colored beast having seven heads and ten horns, which those ten horns is also known as the ten uh, toes in Daniel the second chapter is the same thing. All right. So the fact that they're divided. What did the Lord say? A, a, a kingdom divided cannot stand, but have an end. So we're right now, we're at the, the hill and the toll, basically the foot of Esau's power structure, his empire. And it's beginning to weaken. All right. So we're at the end of Esau's world. It says, seek for nothing else, Ezra, between the hill and the hand, Ezra. All right. So uh, let's jump down to verse 18. And it says, it said, the days are coming when I, when I draw near to visit the inhabitants of the earth. And when I require from the doers of iniquity, the penalty of their iniquity. And when the humiliation of Zion is complete. And another another term for humiliation is affliction. All right. Basically, we've been as long as we've been under the uh, the captivities under these other nations, you know, we've been afflicted. And, you know, who helped to forward our affliction? These are uh, heathen nations. All right, they, they, they delighted, they took pleasure in us being totally humiliated as a people. You know, being at the bottom, being the tail, tail end of society while, you know, they get to rule over us and, and, and get there above us, you know, very high. You know, ruling in wealth, having their own uh, governments while we were completely uh, destitute and having to go to them for the one of all things. Now, who was at the forefront of you know, this uh, alliance, you know, this whole conspiracy. Esau, Edom, pursuant to Psalms, the 83rd chapter. All right, so, you know, we're, we're coming to the end of our humiliation. Basically, our punishment is almost uh, accomplished, it's, it's being complete. Now the Lord's getting ready to visit the sins of our enemies. Predominantly Esau, Edom. So that's why I mentioned, you know, after watching, uh, you know, this lesson with El Elder Apostle Tahar, this devil got a lot to pay. He got a hell of a penalty. And usually the Lord, you know, after we serve captivity under the nations, the Lord ends up judging them. Like when you uh, read that in uh, Genesis, the 15th chapter, when he when uh, he came to uh, Abraham in a vision about how. Uh, his seed after him was going to inherit the land of Canaan. But before that happened, we were going, we would serve our enemies in, in, in a strange land for 400 years. And then he said, after that, you know, after you serve uh, this nation, he's going to, he's going to judge them. Let's, 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 uh, let's go there real quick. Let's go to Genesis 15, 13 and 14. And this is what he did to uh, Egypt. It was prophesying of the Egyptian captivity. Right, Genesis 15 and 13, it says, And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, 
and shall serve them and they shall afflict them for a hundred years. So we will be humbled. We will be afflicted for 400 years. And then it will come a time where basically our humiliation will be complete. Right. It says, and also that nation whom they shall serve. Right. Who shall uh, be uh, slaves to will I judge. Meaning the Lord got a penalty. He had a penalty. For what they've done over to, uh, you know, to the children of uh, Israel. Because we was all right as long as, you know, when Joseph was alive and, you know, the Pharaoh that uh, honored Joseph and set him in, um, you know, his position. But then the scriptures talked about how, you know, there arised a Pharaoh who knew not uh, Joseph. And that's when, you know, the affliction began where we had to serve them with rigor. And after, you know, those, uh, hundreds of years of a hardcore uh, bondage, the Lord ended up judging them. He sent those plagues and, and jacked their asses up. Well, we in a modern day uh, Egypt. We came to this Egypt in ships pursuing the Deuteronomy 28 and 68. All right. And we would serve our enemies in a land that we did not know. And we would, uh, you know, we would not see our land again. And there we shall be sold as bondmen and bondwomen and no man shall buy us. And here we are in, in, in Egypt right now in, in the, 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 the house of bondage. Double straits. But we have to deal with slave patrols. We got to deal with being oppressed, being discriminated against, being marginalized, being constantly harassed. It says that in Daniel that they shall wear out the saints. You know, being hella taxed, paying all type of fines just to keep us on the bottom and to keep us, you know, squeezed. And that's why, you know, in these last days, we're crying out to our Lord, man. Because, hey, the, the, um, the captive of exile hastened to be loose. You know? Just like we were crying in Egypt and the Lord raised up a savior where the Lord's going to send the ultimate savior, which is our Lord, Yahweh Shai. And he's going to be, he's that rock. For so in the Daniel second chapter, all right, uh, the, the 44th verse, he's going to, he's that rock that's cut with our hands. That's going to break in pieces the toes of the, of the beast. So ultimately, Yahweh Shai is going to, you know, give that final death blow to Esau's uh, kingdom. And that's when he's going to fall completely. All right. So going back. All right. The Lord said he's going to require, you know, from the doers of iniquity, the penalty of their iniquity. Now, let's go to uh, Lamentations. Lamentations 4 and 21 through 22. And it says, rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. That dwellest in the land of Uz, the cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken. So you're going to take a cup of, you know, the Lord's uh, fury, man. All right. Everything that you've done to us is going to be done unto you double. It says, and shall make thyself naked, meaning exposed. I right, meaning, you know, the foreskin of your iniquity is uh, being, uh, Peeled back for all of us to see. And that's what it means by, um, you know, basically the, the books being open and, and basically we're seeing everything. All right, the Lord said that, you know, there will be nothing uncovered that shall not be seen. All right, the, the, the things that Esau is being uh, uh, searched out and, and, and sought up. And now he's being completely revealed. It says, the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. All right, your, your humiliation, your affliction. You know, you suffer in hell for, you know, your sins. It says, he will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Zion. I mean, Slakia, O daughter of Edom. 
that was a slip of the tongue, he will discover thy sins. All right, and that's why we're at the end of Esau's world where his sins are all being discovered. Now, I want to read this in the, uh, the NLT and the NIV version. And it reads, and this is uh, the new uh, language translation, it says, O beautiful Jerusalem, your punishment will end. You will soon return from exile. All right, meaning we're going to be delivered out of this captivity once again. What a what a what a what a, 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 a immaculate deliverance, man! It's going to eclipse the uh, the first uh, Exodus when we're delivered out of Egypt, and the Lord showed His mighty hand back then. He's going to show it again. All right, how are we going to return from His exile through those ships through the clouds? Or the chariots, man? We're going to go up into those ships. We're going to be beamed up, man, and our enemies are going to behold us. They're going to watch it happen, man. How we got over here on slave ships and we were, you know, uh, brought here to just serve and entertain and, and get abused. Now we're leaving in spaceships. We went from slave ships to spaceships. So that's how we're going to return from our exile. It says, but Edom, your punishment or your penalty is just beginning. Oof. All right, so basically, you know, your your punishment is just beginning, man. The, the beginning of your end. And now, you know, you're seeing the downfall of Esau's uh, power structure, man. You know, you, you're, you're losing your uh, influence. The nations are no longer uh, respecting you. You're totally divided. And some of the curses that's on us is coming upon your own people. Substance abuse, witchcraft, you know, they're, they're the, um, the face of the oil crisis that, you know, the media has since then swept under the rug. You have a, a, a low fertility rate, a low birth rate. Or you got a lot of Edomite on Edomite crime. So it's only beginning, man. Your women are, are turning on you and wanting to deal with Jake. And having children with Jake. Because they're despising your image. So the, hey, your punishment you, is just beginning for you. All this evil. All this hell that you brought to the, to the nation of Israel. And this is only dealing with the southern kingdom. We ain't even talk about what you did to the north. You got you to gotta pay, pay for all that. So your punishment is just beginning. You got a hell of a penalty to pay. Okay. It says, soon your many sins will be exposed. And we're in that time. That inquisition is being made, and now your iniquity is being exposed, man. All right? From the, from the slave patrols to uh, when you carried us on those uh, slave ships, you know, the apostle a uh, weeks ago did a lesson on that. You know, there was a bit on the, uh, the history channel going into the conditions of, of our people and how we were treated when we were on the slave ship. It was horrible, man. That was hell. So you got to pay for that. You got to pay for the torturing or the, 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 the raping, you know, the bug breaking, the mental trauma, the, you know, the, 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 the mental terrorizing and all the stuff that you did even after uh, slavery, man. NIV it says your punishment will end, daughter of Zion. He will no he will not prolong your exile, but he will punish Chakya, but he will punish your sin, daughter Edom, and expose your wickedness. All right. So hey, you got a penalty, man. All right, and guess what? Your forefathers left that for you. Right? Isaiah 14. And 21, it says, prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. They did do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. All right, so that penalty is, is laid out for you, man. Okay. And what is, and, and what is a, a, a penalty? 
A penalty is basically a punishment imposed for breaking laws, rules, or contracts. And you're guilty of all that, man. You didn't, you didn't uh, transgress. You didn't, you didn't change all the laws. All right, all the laws that the that the the heavenly Father, you know, gave to the children of Israel. You know, you you since then, you know, you've tried to insert yourself into our covenant, and you called yourself the people of the Lord. And you took and you took these laws that are contained in that agreement, and you cast it behind you, and you did what you wanted to do. So that's why the Lord's gonna put the curses upon you too. Our right, Deuteronomy thirty and seven. All right. Matter of fact, let me get that. All right, you you guilty of that, man? You you changed the uh, ordinances. You broken the everlasting covenant. All right. So Deuteronomy thirty and seven says, "And the Lord thy power will bring all these curses upon thine enemies." And on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. All right. So that's why, you know, you're getting plagued with, uh, you know, these are uh, different uh, uh, illnesses and diseases or the Lord sending plagues upon you. All right. It's taking you from your comfort zone. All right. That's what's happening. Now, now you know what it's like to be. All right, uh, persecuted like Jake, because you know you got these uh, Edomite conservatives, you know, talking about now they now they understand what it feels like, you know, as far as uh, Jake being persecuted. Well, you ain't really uh, experienced nothing really yet, man. You ain't really felt what it's like to <laughs> to be a nigga on this side. But you, but but eventually you go. We gonna make you feel it in our kingdom. Okay. You know, these these Christian conservatives, you know, because the government is cracking down on them and deeming them uh, a conspiracy theorist and and domestic terrorist, and now they want to associate with Jake, the plight of Jake now. No, don't 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 associate with us, man. This is just the beginning for y'all. The curses is now coming upon you. All right, let me get that in our Lamentations 1 and 21. And it says, they have heard that I sigh. There is none to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad that thou has done it. Thou will bring the day that thou has called. Yeah, because as long as we were down in the bottom and catching the hell that we caught, and while they were in their comfort zone of being you know, in, in 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 position of power and having uh, uh, certain privileges and, and uh, opportunities and having uh, certain levels of uh, income and wealth and things, you know, uh, tailor made and designed for them to to prosper. They ain't feel nothing for us, man. But now that you know, now, now that they're feeling it, and now that they're being brought down, now all of a sudden, you know, we understand, man. Fuck you, man. All right. Now the Lord is bring is 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 bring you down to, you know, our our condition, man. It says, "Thou will bring the day that thou hast called, and they shall be like unto me. Let all their wickedness come before thee, and do unto them as thou hast done unto me for all my transgressions." In other words, pour all these curses out upon them like you did, uh, uh your people, for all the wickedness that we done. You see, for my saw, for my sighs are many, and my heart is faint. You see. So anyway, um, let me finish this out, and I'm gonna close up. All right, verse uh, twenty. It says, "When the seal is placed upon the it's like yeah, yeah. When the seal is placed upon the age that is about to pass away. All right, and and you know." This is the age right now that's beginning to pass away. Then will I show these signs. All right, meaning what? The signs in the heavens, the signs in the sun and the moon, the, the chariot sightings. All right, the uh, the floods, uh, these hurricanes, fires. You name it, man. Strange uh, signs and wonders that are taking place. It says the books shall be opened before the face of the firmament. And all shall see my judgment to 
together. And ultimately, his penalty is going to begin with the Lord coming back to judge. And it tells you that in Revelation, the 20th chapter, and the books were open. All right, and he cast what? He cast the, the, the dragon and his angels into the lake of fire. All right, death and hell was all cast into the lake of fire, man. So these devils, they're going to be burned. And then after that uh, torment, after that uh, fiery judgment, they're going to come back and they're going to go right into slavery for a thousand years. And you're going to, you know, basically uh, uh, fulfill the rest of your penalty. All right. So, hey, you know. That's that that's pretty much it. You got a hell of a penalty awaiting you. All right, for the for the controversy of Zion. Because your hatred did tear did tear perpetually. Even when our iniquity had an end, you still pursued after the blood of your brother Jacob. So you got a lot to, to pay for, man. All right, even down to what you're doing today, man, you're trying to kill us off with, with that damn uh, uh, death row dart and trying to, you know, uh, mark us and trying to, you know, uh, rule over us as, as a God, trying to, you know, uh, eliminate the existence of the Most High out of the world. You're going to pay for all that, man. All right, so anyway, with that, I'm going to close. I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh Shai. And until the next lesson, Shalom.